in oil prices coupled with COVID-19 pandemic, rising inflation among other factors plunged the Nigerian economy into a severe economic recession. Before COVID-19, the Nigerian economy was expected to grow by 2.1% in 2020, which means that the pandemic has led to a reduction in growth by more than 5 percentage points. On the heels of the worst downturn in recent history this year, owing to the pandemic and oil price shocks, the economy is seen emerging back to growth in 2021 as demand at home and abroad recovers. However, economists say the outlook remains fragile, clouded by uncertainty regarding the oil price trajectory, rising inflation, elevated unemployment, security challenges, and social tensions. Now, joining me live from our Abuja studios is a professor of capital markets and is also the president of Capital Markets Academics of Nigeria, Seaman, Professor Uche Uwaleke. Prof, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Tolu, for inviting me. Prof, I'm going to start this way. The CBN has come out to say by 2021, at the end of first quarter, it's likely we'll get out of recession. With all of these moves they are making on the side, uh, talking on the monetary side, we don't know how well the fiscal side will complement this, but they're optimistic that this will happen. Is this not, does this look like a tall order to me? <laughs> well, I, I share in that optimism. Uh, if you... Um, you know, use certain indicators, uh, if there are anything to go by. Uh, first of all, as you rightly observed, the, this recession is um, coming as a result of uh, the, the negative impact of COVID and the fall in oil price. Um, and you will agree with me that um, for us in Nigeria, um, unlike in other parts of the world, we are beginning to see a reduction in the number of cases. Uh, they're not as high as um, you know, they used to be, uh, and the economy is um, you know, gradually being restarted. Uh, what that means is that we expect to see an increased tempo in economic activities. Um, part of why you saw the, the huge, the, uh, the severe contraction in quarter two of, um, of this year was because of um, the re restrictions and lockdowns you know, that, that we had. And um, as those restrictions uh, were eased, um, the, of course, um, activities um, you know, began to uh, pick up. Uh, you, would not, you would notice that activities like, um, or sectors like trade, um, uh, manufacturing, um, hotel and accommodation, yes, that are still in negative territory, but if you look at the, the performance in quarter three of 2020, of course, that showed um, some level of um, improvement. So the contraction we had in quarter three, uh, minus 3.62%, uh, actually represents um, um, a moderation of the, um, the contraction in quarter two. So what that means is that if this trend continues, there's every likelihood that by the first quarter of 2020, the economy will rebound. And bear in mind, Tolu, that uh, if experience is anything to go by, you know, over the years, the strongest growth has always been in the last quarter of the year. In 2019, for example, the strongest GDP, GDP growth we had was um, in quarter four, when the economy grew by 2.5%. Uh, uh, of course, on the average, we had a, a growth rate of 2.27. So, and that, that should be expected. As we approach the low tides um, uh, period, um, we expect a, you know, a frenzy, uh, a flurry of activities, and uh, that, that should rub off uh, positively you know, on the numbers, on, on, on GDP numbers. Again, we, we also know that um, harvest season uh, will also have, have the, um, the effect of moderating uh, the inflation rate. And the, 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 the major challenge we have, um, as a matter of fact, it's not just that the economy uh, is contracting, but it's also the fact that, um, you know, inflation rate uh, has been rising. So it's a case of um, uh, stagflation. And I think that by the first quarter of, by next year, um, uh, by March next year, we expect to see you know, a positive um, uh, number in terms of uh, really GDP growth and also a moderation um, in inflation rate. So the signs are there. The mm. Purchasing Managers Index, for example, for the first time in many months, in the month of November, you know, crossed the 50 points um, you know, uh, threshold, an indication of expansion in manufacturing activity. And you also know that oil price um, it has stayed above the $40 um, per, per barrel. Um, part of why we had that contraction, uh, severe contraction um, in um, quarter two and also quarter three was as a result of the decline in the oil sector. But 
There's an interesting thing I need to point out here that in quarter three of uh, 2020, the oil sector contracted by over 13 percent. Compare that to quarter two when it was just a contraction of 6.63 uh, percent. And um, of course, based on an average daily production of 1.81 uh, in quarter two and then 1.67 in quarter three. What that means is that if oil sector had that severe contraction in quarter, uh, in the third quarter, and yet the economy was able to, you know, record that, um, uh, you know, moderate, a, a moderate um, contraction in uh, pre GDP growth, it means that the non-oil sector is actually a resilient. The non-oil sector has the potential of, um, um, you know, really holding this economy because the non-oil sector you know, contracted by just 2.5% uh, compared to uh, over 6 percent that um, was recorded in, in, quarter, in quarter two. So if you take all these um, uh, factors into co consideration, you will agree with me that um, you know, going forward, yes, we expect to see uh, some uh, strong um, you know, recovery uh, you know, going on such that by the first quarter of next year, we should, we should be having a positive um, um, you know, growth in uh, GDP. Yeah, on you. Uh, Prof, um, also looking at the vaccine now, uh, well, uh, that, that's what's being talked about now across the world. Uh, some say that um, the break, the disruption we've had in the supply chain might also be addressed. And um, this might one way or the other also help to improve what the economy, not just in Nigeria, but the global side of the economy. What impact do you see this positive news having also globally on um, oh, the economy? Yeah, I, I, absolutely, Tolo. We... we already beginning to you know, feel the impact of um, uh, vaccine promise um, in the financial sector, especially in the stock markets. Uh, global stock markets are positively responding yeah, to yeah. the vaccine promise, um, as well as the fact that um, the tension that um, was building up in the U.S. following the U.S. election you know, appears to be uh, going down. Uh, Donald Trump uh, has uh, consented to the commencement of the transition process, something that um, uh, of course, lifted um, stock markets um, globally. So the vaccine um, promise is, is a very strong one. It's going to be positive for financial markets. And um, I expect that to, to rub off positively um, on our markets and, of course, um, on the economy in general. As you know, uh, the stock markets um, has been one of the bright spots uh, in, in all this um, uh, you know, uh, you know, recession, recession story. Uh, year-to-date return, as we speak, is over 30%. So stock market has been bullish. Uh, the financial sector has remained strong, uh, according to the central bank. Financial soundness indicators you know, uh, um, are relatively OK, talking about the non-performing loans, according to the central bank, that, are, that have now dropped to about 5.7%. Or talking about um, uh, capital adequacy ratio, that's now in excess of 15%, which is the uh, central bank's um, uh, threshold. And also liquidity ratio, uh, a lot of banks now have more than 30%, which is also the threshold. So if the financial sector is strong, um, and um, there are other sectors that, that have shown promise, the information and communication sector, for example, for understandable reasons. Um, so if these sectors are, are strong, uh, we expect that their impact will rub off positively you know, on, the, uh, on the economy. So I see the vaccine thing as a, a huge um, positive for the Nigerian economy. But let me also say that my little concern I have has to do with the agri sector. The agri sector in quarter three uh, actually disappointed if you compare that uh, to the performance in quarter two. In quarter two, agri sector grew by 1.58%, but in quarter three, it fell. Um, the contraction you know, became severe by 1.39. So coming at 1.39 for me represents a uh, disappointment. And um, I, I think that goes to reinforce what the National Bureau of Statistics is saying about um, the fact that the inflationary pressure we have in this country is more from the food index. It's coming more from food inflation, which is even higher than 17%. Uh, uh, Headline inflation is 14.23, but food inflation is uh, as above 17%. Uh, so, and I think going forward, the near-term solution to this, um, uh, in my view, would be like using one stone to kill two, two birds. That one stone is the stone that if we address the food security challenge, if we address food inflation, we are not only um, attacking, trying to rein in inflation, we are also at the same time uh, supporting growth. Uh, 
because remember, the agri sector contributes 30 percent of GDP. That was the, the figure we saw. 30% um, of GDP and employs the majority of the people. So if we are, if we are addressing agriculture, we are also addressing inflation, we are also addressing um, you know, uh, unemployment, and um, by extension we are also addressing um, uh, growth. So I think the, the government should take that uh, uh, a lot more seriously. The issue of insecurity has affected um, uh, food output because that is one of the major things affecting uh, agriculture. And that's also why you find that the food inflation is higher in places like uh, in North Central, North East and North West, than even in Lagos, where consumption um, level is expected to be, is, is supposed to be high. So if we address food uh, the insecurity, if, uh, thank God, they are now talking about uh, opening, the, opening the borders. If the borders are now open, they've been shut for quite some time. Um, uh, if the, uh, the transport um, logistics, you know, um, are addressed, if the issue of uh, mechanized farming you know, is also addressed. Um, I, I think, um, again, involving our universities, you know, to ensure that um, yield is improved because that's also one of the challenges we have. And also investing in um, storage facilities. I think all this will um, go a long way in ensuring food security, moderating inflation rate, and um, increasing the contribution of agriculture to GDP. So if we can increase agriculture to GDP, you can be sure that um, this economy will not only be growing, but will also be having uh, the inclusive growth, which is what is critical. In inclusive growth is the one that, is, uh, that, create job, that creates jobs. It's not just Indeed. about numbers. Um, and that's my, that has always been my take. So it, it's important we address that. And I'm happy the central bank is addressing the issue of for forex pressure. Um, yes, uh, Prof, diaspora, uh, allow me but uh, in there, Prof. Let's round off on that note. I wanted yes. you to talk about Forex yes. and what's been happening, all efforts by the Central Bank of Nigeria, even talking about remittances, uh, partnering with Needcom and all of this. How well do you see us addressing the disparity? Uh, and on, on, in one line, what's in all of this for the man on the street? Hike in electricity tariff, hike in fuel tariff. We have hike in tax and all of that. What's there for the man on the street? Let's round up on that note very briefly. Yes, of course, all these hikes uh, have contributed to the high inflation rate we are seeing and, of course, um, um, high poverty levels and, and, and all that. But um, uh, the, some of them, I, I, I think, are, are necessary, um, like the removal of uh, fuel subsidy. We can't continue to subsidize fuel. But there are others, too, that I, I think um, that given the conditions we are in, the government... Uh, you know, can afford to, to differ. We can afford to differ hike in electricity tariffs, for example. We can afford to suspend some of them uh, until a time when the economy, uh, the average, you know, yes, the economy can, um, uh, you know, absorb that. So uh, you notice that the central bank ap appears to have, um, uh, you know, left, to, to have changed the gear now, you know, focusing now more on development finance functions. And that's because uh, the central bank, uh, uh, you know, believes, and rightly so, that inflation is not... Um, uh, they, they, you know, cause the monetary factors any longer. So the central bank is now supporting through a raft of interventions. And on the forex thing, I, do, I, 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 I want to support the idea of un unification of exchange rates, you know, uh, as a gradual uh, process. I, I want to support the idea of anything that will increase supply of uh, for forex, uh, such as the, uh, the poli new policy on diaspora, um, you know, remittances, as well as um, uh, the demand management um, framework of the central bank because in the near term the the, the what the central bank um, um, uh, you know should be doing is to see how they can um, manage manage the demand in the near term you know while the supply is um, you know expanded um, um, you know gradually i don't subscribe to the idea of floating the naira you know uh, almost immediately because it's going to have a, a very negative impact on an economy that is in a recession Yes, we are going to have a single exchange rate, but it's going to be a gradual pro process. Um, the unification will be a gradual process. It's not going to be an event. Because if you, unify, if you float the Naira today, given the demand-supply asymmetry that is in favor of, hugely in favor of demand, then we are going to run into problems um, here, you know, as, as a country. All right. Professor Uche Uwaleke, I was thank you very much for your time. He's a professor of capital market and also the president of capital markets academics of Nigeria, CMA. Thank you very much. You joined us from our studio in Abuja. Thank you for your time. My pleasure, Tolu.